Jai Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nichananda, Shivanamaita, Gadadhar, Shiva, Sadika, Or Bhaktivinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Glory to Prabhupada. You're reading from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami as translated with commentaries by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are on Adi Lila, Chapter 1, Text 1. And the title of this chapter is The Spiritual Masters. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the spiritual masters, the devotees of the Lord, the Lord's incarnations, his plenary portions, his energies, and the primeval Lord himself, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Text 2. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Sri Krishna Chaitanya, the Lord Nichananda, or like the sun and moon. They've arisen simultaneously on the horizon of Gota to dissipate the darkness of ignorance and thus wonderfully bestow benediction upon all. Text 3. What the Upanishads describe as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence of his body, and the Lord, known as the Supersoul, is but his localized plenary portion. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna himself, full with six opulences. He's the absolute truth, and no other truth is greater than or equal to him. Text 4. May that Lord, who is known as the son of Srimati Sachi Devi, be transcendentally situated in the innermost chambers of your heart, resplendent with the radiance of molten gold. He has appeared in the age of Kali by his causeless mercy to bestow what no incarnation has ever offered before, the most sublime and radiant spiritual knowledge of the mellow taste of his service. Text 5. The loving affairs of Sri Radha and Krishna are transcendental manifestations of the Lord's internal pleasure-giving potency. Although Radha and Krishna are one in their identity, they separated themselves eternally. Now these two transcendental identities have again united in the form of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I bow down to him who has manifested himself with the sentiment and complexion of Srimati Radharani although he is Krishna himself. Text 6. Desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love, and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love, the Supreme Lord Hari, richly endowed with her emotions, appeared from the womb of Srimati Sachi Devi as the moon appeared from the ocean. Text 7. May Sri Nichanandaram be the object of my constant remembrance. Shankarshan, Seshanag, and the Vishnus, who lie in the Karana Ocean, Garba Ocean, and Ocean of Milk, are his plenary portions and the portions of his plenary portions. Text 8. I surrender unto the lotus feet of Sri Nichanandaram who is known as Sankrashan, in the midst of the Traharvua, consisting of Vasudev, Sankrashan, Pradumna, and Aniruddha. He possesses full opulences and resides in Vaikuntha Loka, far beyond the material creation. Text 9. I offer my full obeisances unto the feet of Sri Nichananda Ram, whose partial representation called Karanadakshai Vishnu, 
lying on the Karana ocean, is the original Purusha, the master of the illusory energy and the shelter of all the universes. Text 10. I offer my full obeisances unto the feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, a partial part of whom is Garbhadakshai Vishnu. From the navel of Garbhadakshai Vishnu sprouts the lotus that is the birthplace of Brahma, the engineer of the universe. The stem of that lotus is the resting place of the multitude of planets. Text 11. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, whose secondary part is the Vishnu lying in the ocean of milk. That Karanadakshai Vishnu is the super soul of all living entities and the maintainer of all the universes. Seshanag is his further subpart. Text 12. Lord Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of Mahavishnu, whose main function is to create the cosmic world through the actions of Maya. 13. Because he's non different from Hari, the Supreme Lord, he's called Advaita, and because he propagates the cult of devotion, he's called Acharya. He's the Lord and the incarnation of the Lord's devotee. Therefore, I take shelter of him. Takes 14. I offer my obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Krishna, who is non different from his feature as a devotee, devotional incarnation, devotional manifestation, pure devotee, and devotional energy. Takes 15. Glory to the all merciful. Radha and Dunmohan, I'm lame, ill-advised, yet they are my directors, and their lotus feet are everything to me. 16. In a temple of jewels in Vrindavan, underneath a desire tree, Sri Sri Radha Govinda, served by their most confident associates, sit upon an effulgent throne. I offer my humble obeisances unto them. Text 17. Sri Srila Gopinath, who originated the transcendental mellow of the rasa dance, stands on the shore in Vamsivat and attracts the attention of the cowherd damsels with the sound of his celebrated flute. May they all confer upon us their benediction. Text 18. Glory to Sri Chaitanya Nichananda. Glory to Advaita Chandra. Glory to all the devotees of Shri Gaur, Lord Chaitanya. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya, Jaya Nichananda, Jaya Dvaita Chandra, Jaya Gaur Bhaktivinda. Text 19. The three deities of Vrindavan, Madan Mohan, Govinda, and Gopinath, have absorbed the heart and soul of the Gaudi of Vaishnavas, followers of Lord Chaitanya. I worship their lotus feet, for they are the lords of my heart. Prabhupada's Commentary The author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita offers his respectful obeisances unto the three deities of Vrindavan named Sri Radha Madan Mohan, Sri Radha Govinda Dev, and Sri Radha Gopinathaji. These three deities are the life and soul of the Bengali Vaishnavas, or Gaudiya Vaishnavas, who have a natural aptitude for residing in Vrindavan. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas, who follow strictly in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, worship the divinity by chanting transcendental sounds meant to develop a sense of one's transcendental relationship with the Supreme Lord, a reciprocation of mellows, rasas, of mutual affection, and ultimately the achievement of the desired success in devotional service. These three deities are worshipped in three different stages of one's development, and the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu scrupulously follow these principles of approach. Gaudiya Vaishnavas perceive the ultimate objective in Vedic hymns, 
composed of 18 transcendental letters that adore Krishna as Madan Mohan, Govinda, and Gopinath Vallabha. Madan Mohan is he who charms Cupid, the god of love. Govinda is he who possesses, who pleases the senses and the cows. And Gopi Janavalava is the transcendental lover of the gopis. Krishna himself is called Madan Mohan, Govinda, Gopi Janavalava, and countless other names as he plays in his different pastimes with his devotees. The three deities, Madan Mohan, Govinda, and Gopi Janavalava, have very specific qualities. Worship of Madan Mohan is on the platform of reestablishing a forgotten relationship with the personality of Godhead. In the material world, we're presently in utter ignorance of our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. Pango refers to one who cannot move independently by his own strength, and Mandamate is one who is less intelligent because he's too absorbed in materialistic activities. It's best for such persons not to aspire for success in fruit of activities or mental speculation, but instead simply to rent, surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The perfection of life is simply to surrender to the Supreme. In the beginning of our spiritual life, we must therefore worship Madan Mohan so that he may attract us and nullify our attachment for material sense gratification. This relationship with Dan Mohan is necessary for neophyte devotees. When one wishes to render service to the Lord with strong attachment, one then worships Govinda on the platform of transcendental service. Govinda is the reservoir of all pleasures. When by the grace of Krishna, the devotees and the devotees, one reaches perfection in devotional service, he can appreciate Krishna as Gopijana Balava, the pleasure deity of the damsels of Raj. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained this mode of devotional service in three stages, and therefore these worshipful deities are installed in Vrindavan by different Goswamis. They're very dear to the Gaudiya Vaishnavas there, who visit the temples at least once a day. Besides the temples of these three deities, many other temples have been established in Vrindavan, such as the temple of Radha Damodar of Jiva Goswami, the temple of Shamarsinda of Shamananda Goswami, the temple of Gokulananda of Lokana Swami, and the temple of Radha Raman of Gopalbhata Goswami. There are seven principal temples over 400 years old that are the most important of the 5,000 temples now existing in Vrindavan. Gaudiya indicates the part of India between the southern side of the Himalaya mountains and the northern part of the Vindhya hills, which is called Arya Varta, or the land of the Aryans. This portion of India is divided into five parts or provinces, Panchagoda Desh, Saraswata, Kashmir and Punjab, Kanyakubja, Uttar Pradesh, including the modern city of Lucknow, Madhya Gauda, Madhya Pradesh, Maitila, Bihar, part of Bengal, and Ukula, part of Bengal and the whole of Orissa. Bengal is sometimes called Gauda Desh, partly because it forms a portion of Maitila and partly because the capital of the Hindu king Raj Lakshman Shane was known as Gota. This old capital later came to be known as Gotapura and gradually Mayapur. The devotees of Arissa are called Udiyas. Devotees of Bengal are called Gaudias. Devotees of southern India are known as Dravida devotees. As there are five provinces in Aryavata, so Dakshinatya, Southern India is also divided into five provinces, which are called Panchadravida. The four Vaishnavacharyas, who are the great authorities 
of the four Vaishnav disciplic successions, as well as Sripad Shankaracharya of the Mayavad school, appeared in the Pancha Dravida provinces. Among the four Vaishnavacharyas, who are all accepted by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, Sri Ramanuja Acharya appeared in the southern part of Andhra Pradesh at Mahabhutapuri. Sri Madhva Acharya appeared at Pajikam near Vimanagiri in the district of Mangalore, and Sri Vishnu Swami appeared at Panja. Sri Nambakacharya appeared at Mangarapatana in the extreme south. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the chain of disciplic succession from Madhvacharya. But the Vaishnavas in his line did not accept Tattvavadis, who also claimed to belong to the Madhva Sampradaya. To distinguish themselves clearly from the Tattvavadi branch of Madhva descendants, the Vaishnavas of Bengal prefer to call themselves Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Sri Madhvacharya is also known as Sri Gauda Purnananda, and therefore the name Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya is quite suitable for the disciplic succession of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Our spiritual master, Om Vishnupad Srimad Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, accepted initiation in the Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. <laughs>